Hey guys, it's Jack. I just wanted to talk to you today about a way that you can help support the podcast. If you're not already, we would really appreciate it. If you guys went and reviewed us on Apple or Spotify, those reviews really help people find the podcast and help it get recognized. And, uh, you know, if you've been enjoying the show, we really appreciate your support. Another thing that you can do to support the channel is to become a Patreon member. So we have Patreon memberships that start at just $5 a month. And when you sign up, you get access to all of our episodes ad-free. Uh, that's the big bonus for that. I mean, we also do some Patreon bonus episodes for our subscribers. Uh, but this is the, the biggest and best way that you can support the Team House channel and podcast uh, if you'd like to. And we really appreciate that. So go in and check us out at patreon.com slash the team house. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Eyes On. I'm Andy Milburn. With me is Jason Lyons and D Tacos. And we're going to jump right into it today uh, because much to your relief, we have a limited amount of time. And there's <laughs> there's a couple of really big news stories D, what do you want us to start off on here? The uh, the Moscow shooting? Yeah, I mean, so that's I the... Some, uh, so I got some fresh gouge on that. You want to hear it? Please, yeah, because that's dominating. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is quite literally breaking. I hate to use that term, but this is from uh, Russian Telegram accounts uh, in Moscow. I would argue and I would venture if we release this today that no one else has all of the information that I'm about to give. Um, that's it sounds a dreadful boast. So let's go ahead. All right. So, um, the, the death toll, hey, anyway, back, backtrack for a moment. Okay. There was an attack on a Russian, on the Russian, uh, Kroka city hall, uh, in Moscow. It's like, uh, it's this massive, uh, what's a large kind of emporium includes an, uh, auditorium. There's a train station there. I, I mean, it's a, it's a showpiece, uh, kind of location within Moscow for, uh, for the young, and uh, and so evidently what happened, four suspects uh, walked into the foyer of the auditorium uh, and they started shooting. Interestingly enough, there was there was a concert uh, and they walked in about uh, just as the concert was beginning and they started shooting at latecomers in the in the uh, in the lobby. And then they walked into the auditorium itself. As I said, death toll around 149. Russians expect that to rise um, several hundred wounded. Russian special forces were involved, despite though footage shown at the site, no gunmen were killed or arrested at the site. And now get this, this is where it gets crazy. The Russians are reporting that they've arrested four terrorists in the Bryansk region of Russia. Okay, I'm going to help you guys out here because I had to look it up. That is on the Russian-Ukrainian border. So what they're claiming, think about this, all right, they're claiming the terrorists were fleeing back towards Ukraine, right? And that they captured, okay, one of them is saying that he was paid half a million rubles to carry out the attack. Not saying by whom, but you see what I'm, you know, I mean, the Russians clearly are are, are, are kind of doing the Dora piece here of uh, laying out the breadcrumbs saying, well, look, you know, we don't know who did this, but they're trying to escape to Ukraine. At the same time, the Islamic State is saying, no, wait a second, we did it, we did it. U.S. intelligence estimate, U.S. intelligence saying they don't know for sure. Islamic State seems like a safe bet. But there are several other potential groups, you know. I mean, remember, uh, Russia has ongoing uh, counterinsurgencies, in, not just in Chechnya, but Dagestan, too, uh, both places in which they, you know, Putin has has uh, pissed off a lot of people. And, um, and of course, Syria, you know, uh, and, and which is the reason why the Islamic State would be uh, would be hitting them. Um, so I will pause there for a moment in case you have any questions. Oh, hey, the last thing is uh, the Russians just uh, announced, uh, this is on Telegram, um, and it's a Russian Telegram channel. I should be more specific. It's a Russian-backed Telegram channel, uh, and they're claiming that it was the Russian Volunteer Corps Right. Remember, we talked about the Russian volunteer corps. Bless. That's who they're saying they um, uh, that that that's who it is, and that they conducted a purge, or or rather, they arrested a bunch of them before the incident. And this was a uh, this was a revenge. Um, anyway, uh, back back to you guys. 
Uh, yeah. So uh, the questions you have. What I'm uh, being told and uh, what I'm reading is that uh, as little as three days ago, U.S. Um, the embassy uh, warned uh, Moscow that, hey, there is something coming. They didn't have specifics, um, but it was uh, dismissed by Putin as uh, divisive propaganda, you know, just trying to divide the country up, um, which is the exact same mistake that the Iranians made not long ago. We tried to warn them about an imminent attack. They dismissed it and it happened. Um, so, yeah. you know, I think that's a part of the, at least the intel community that the um, most citizens don't know about that we do, despite our differences with Russia and Iran, we do sell, uh, share intelligence with them on that level. As you know, if there's an imminent attack coming, because despite what some people think, while we disagree and we have issue with the Russian and Iranian governments, we don't hate their people. So we don't want to see innocents killed. So, uh, well, it's some a, people do. It's a policy of repress, repress, repress reciprocity. <laughs> yeah, too, right? You know, um, it's like, OK, so even if you guys don't agree to this, we are going to do this. Um, to, which leaves the door open for collaboration. Going absolutely, on, on absolutely, and and, and and that's a yeah, that's a great point. Hey, Jason, I just want to say what Putin actually said when uh, when he was warned on March the nineteenth. All this resembles outright blackmail and and an intention to intimidate and destabilize our society. Just that's from the U.S. warning. I yeah. mean, once again, you know how. What, what more example do you need? Yeah, I'm but, curious to see how that gets walked back, that statement, now that it's happened. Well, Putin was just talking. He just, like, uh, addressed uh, Russia, like, probably 30, 40 minutes ago. It was, oh, like, he has made an official statement. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, in the, the uh, uh, Medvedev, uh, who's the deputy head of the, you know, they're equivalent of the Russian Security Council, uh, has, has, uh, is already blaming Ukraine. I mean, him specifically. So it isn't just on Telegram. He says, if it, well, he says, if, if it is established that these terrorists are connected with the Kiev regime and he goes on to issue dire threats, you know, I mean, how much more dire can it get than you've already invaded that country? Right. You know? So, like um, the, the Medvedev but, but they're thing. They're getting ready. They're getting ready to, to put the blame on, on Kiev's doorstep because it certainly serves. Uh, Russians better to do so than to blame the Islamic State yeah. and bring up their whole sorry venture in Syria. Can we touch on the transformation that Medvedev's gone through when he was the Russian president, like boys with Obama and like, oh, this could be maybe a glimmer of hope. And then he's gone full like black trench coat. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't think there was any transformation there. Yeah. I think they were just always playing us all it's along. Been what it's mean, been. You know, and, and, and this is this is where we mix um, our uh, kind of our own culture with our uh, attempts at real politic. You know, we want to always, always inject the personal level in, in yeah. personal relation in, in these geopolitical relationships. Um, and, and these are, you know, whether you're a, you're a head of state, uh, I mean, regardless, regardless of where you're a head of state, your country, your national interests come first. And But we in the U.S., we recognize that in, in ourselves, but we demand kind of we friendship and loyalty from uh, from foreign diplomat, I mean, foreign state, uh, heads of state, um, which, of course, doesn't make sense. Um, and especially when we're talking about adversaries. So you get things like, you know, George Bush saying about Putin, he seems like a man I can deal with. Yeah, you know, yeah. I looked into his yeah. eyes and then all the crap that um, other presidents have talked about, both mm. Putin and and uh, you, you members of Russia, of the Kremlin. I mean, it's absurd. No, these guys are all very, I mean, they shit that, you know, former Soviets. And if they're not for, and, and they're steeped in that culture mm -hmm. and we never understood that culture anyway. Yeah, uh, but we kind of understood it during the Cold War, and what kept us on the good side is we we never got sucked in, even at the end, um, to oh hey, listen, Khrushchev's being nice to us today, so you know let's start making concessions. Yeah, yeah, it's our yeah. it's our own Im mirror imaging, and, and it's our own weakness. Geopolitics is is a hard game, and and very few U.S. statesmen realize that Kissinger, like him or hate him, did understand yeah. that. Absolutely. Anything <laughs> so and all that on Moscow. So watch this space, guys. Uh very interesting. And um we will 
you know, it, it continue to track what to what Russia, what's being said in uh, in in Russia on this. What was um, interesting was like, uh, especially right after the attack, probably like an hour or two after attack, they had that picture of that white van with old Ukrainian plates on it. Yeah, and it's like, hey guys, if if Ukraine really bit, did this, a bit obvious. Yeah, God, what are we doing? Like, are they really doing that? Like, let's yeah. let's be serious here. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's, let's who's let's running this? Ukraine, yeah. the slob of Ukraine stickers yeah. on the enemy. On a I, yeah, an early story yeah. I saw too said that uh, during the attack that um, a Ukrainian flag was raised above the uh, I saw that the building yeah. and then it disappeared. Yeah. Then I never saw saw anything about it again. So I mean, I, they also said they were wearing fake beards. Like guys, what are we doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> can we just find out who yeah. did this? And you know, and like, but I mean, the know, Russians you know the Russians is. won't be hey, honest anyway. So. Hey. Yeah, but I mean, you know how these things are. I mean, remember the uh, well, most recently, seven October, and then you remember the uh, the attacks um, in Paris in twenty fifteen, and the initial reports are always low ball, uh, unfortunately, on the extent of the casualties and yeah. how bad the event was. So I think, sadly, we're going to see that the the casualty numbers rise uh because you know reading behind the lines russian special forces did not get there on time mm. and um and so yes I, I don't think this is going to be a story that covers the russian security services and glory but that doesn't you know i mean we we've all made these mistakes um so that isn't me being smug it's a tragedy regardless d yes um before so i i, I really I, I mean you've got two marines here and I really okay three Richie stop reminding me. Yeah. Um, so I, I really uh, you know today saw another not a tragedy but uh, a milestone event in uh, General Gray, former Commandant of the Marine Corps. More importantly, oh General Gray, by the way, uh, easily the most easily uh, the most influential Commandant uh, of the last I don't know since Lejeune, John A. Lejeune yeah, probably, absolutely. and some people would argue the most. Period. Why was he so influential? Um, because he don't worry, I'll get, I'll get rid of him in a moment. Not, <laughs> a, not in a bad way, but he's he, he's got things to say about General Gray, obviously. <laughs> you know, General Gray, bottom line is he brought the Marine Corps from this kind of woe is me, Vietnam uh, fixated culture, yeah. uh, which was very, you know, despite what we may say, very hierarchical, very zero tolerance. Um, and it was a very bad time, not just in the Marine Corps, but in every service in the 70s, post-Vietnam, drugs, racial tension, you name it. Um, mm. And Craig came in and and did two things. He cleaned house, you know, from top down. He instituted, implemented things like drug testing and all this stuff, you know. But but it was a it, it was a concerned, compassionate leadership. He was loved by the rank and file in a way that no other commandant has been and why it wasn't just because he could talk to the marines and drop the f-bomb it was because he genuinely cared uh, about them um and showed it in his policies improving barracks like blah 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 but he you know at the same time he he raised he raised the standards of the marine corps that was internally externally um he oh and also internally he emphasized mission command in a way that has not been emphasized by any other commandant i would add um uh, you know, for all sins, but possibly the, the current one will be. Um, and so he brought us a, so all these things about initiative driven command. Um, uh, he brought in, uh, uh, warfare. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, to, to change our whole doctrine, war yeah. fighting, right. Maneuver, Maneuver warfare, warfare yeah. uh, which is not about moving pieces on the map. It's about mm -hmm. mentality, um, which is, Always, always putting your enemy in the horns of a dilemma, on the horns of a dilemma, uh, thinking, deciding um, in a manner that that makes your tempo faster than that of the adversary. It was mm -hmm. all about the the mental game, the three dimensional chessboard, as as he described it. Mm -hmm. um, Gray was also very interestingly a self made man in every sense. Um, he uh, uh, he he was a I mean he. He was a construction worker, right? He enlisted in the Marine Corps yeah. um, at, at the age of 22, went to Korea, fought for two years in Korea yeah. as a rifleman, made sergeant, um, like, you know, battlefield promotions. Mm -hmm. 
um, and then subsequently was uh, commissioned as an officer. In Vietnam, interestingly, uh, when he got a silver star, he was on a, uh, he, he was, his official title was, he was an artillery observer with an artillery unit, but uh, he was also, at the time, he was working in intelligence, communications, and signals intelligence. Yep. He had a, a communications background. I want a silver star for bringing Marines out of a, a minefield. minefield. Jason, yeah. I'm going to turn over to you because I got to take care of this uh, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, General Gray, I, I had the uh, the pleasure and honor of meeting him. It was long after his retirement. Uh, I was at an event and he was there and uh, we got to talking a little bit and mentioned where I was from in New Jersey. And uh, he grew up right next door at uh, oh, wow. in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, from originally from Rahway, New Jersey. And uh, his family moved to Point Pleasant and uh, he played football. I think he played three sports, football, baseball and I, basketball, I believe. And, uh, you know, great athlete, um, really, really easy to talk to. And, you know, like Andy said, he was a Marines Marine, uh, especially enlisted. He uh, is noted for when he would address new uh, officers, he would tell them that your sole reason for raising your hand, um, yes, it's to defend the Constitution. Yes, it is to defend, you know, the nation. But it's also to be first and foremost there for your enlisted uh, and subordinate Marines. That was his most important, um, his credo. Uh, like Andy said, maneuver warfare was a big thing with him. Um, and it was pretty timely because of Desert Storm and, you know, and all of that. Um but he truly believed in every Marine being a rifleman, so much so that he was the first, and I don't know if only, but the first commandant to have his official portrait done in his utilities, his camis. Um, every other one were in dress uniforms, dress blues. Um, and uh, he was the first to do that to show that every Marine is a rifleman. And uh, that really stood out to me. So uh, he will surely be missed. I mean, 95 years old, he lived a hell of a life. So um you know, great Marine. He was active right up to the end, too. Yep. Uh, he was, um, he, you know, he ran the, uh, or instrumental in, in running the Potomac Institute, which is mm -hmm. a think tank. And uh, yep. But, uh, you know, one one really interesting point, I think this will come out, I, I hope it comes out, and, um, you know, presumably there'll, there'll be books about a book about him, but he took over the Marine Corps at a very, uh, at, at a, you know, the Marine Corps was in crisis back in the late 80s. People forget about this or in the 80s. And it, it was um, part of it was post Vietnam. And, you know, the the army, the Navy can absorb uh, some of the, the, the moral, uh, <laughs> the morale problems and all the other things that were going on. But the Marine Corps, as a small organization now facing its just, you know, justifying its existence yet again, um, not doing well uh, across the board. None of the services were, but in particular, the Marine Corps had a hard time in the eighties. Remember, in eighty three was the Marine Corps bombing mm -hmm. uh, that killed two hundred and forty. Uh, there was, you know, there were all kinds of operational and tactical, and indeed a, a strategic level decisions that that uh, were made there that that frankly led to that tragedy. And they weren't all political decisions. A lot of them were made by people in uniform and they were very poor decisions. Um, and not a lot of people really um, were held responsible. But Gray came in, um, knowing, you know, in the aftermath of that, um, realizing that, yes, Marine Corps had to be seen to hold its own accountable. And then, um, uh, you know, the same year he came in, we had, uh, I don't know if you remember, Clayton Lone Tree, Mm -hmm. um oh, he, yeah. he was the he was the primary player in in a uh scandal in moscow bar in moscow at embassy u.s embassy moscow in 1987 yeah. um he and uh and one of his cohorts i think two of his cohorts definitely one another one went to jail sold secrets they were caught in a, a russian honey trap honey pot trap and mm -hmm. um and, and uh continued to um give secrets to the Russians for a period yeah. of time before they were caught. And then finally, remember Oliver North facing criminal charges for his involvement in the uh, Iran Contra affair. And within the Marine Corps, uh, Oliver North was not regarded as being the hero that the U S public was, uh, you know, there were uh, people who had, you know, I'll just say this, uh, he, he, let me put it this way. I don't mean to defame Oliver North. I just mean to say, yes, he was a very brave man. He was a, mm. uh, a but, 
and and yes, he was a hero in Vietnam. But my point is that there were people within the Marine Corps who who were concerned about the way he was acting, concerned that he was uh, violating integrity while wearing mm -hmm. uniform. I didn't say he did. I said they were concerned, and Gray was one of them. So he felt like the Marine Corps had a black eye, and indeed it did. And it, it you know, part of uh, what he was doing, and people didn't realize this perhaps at the time, was setting the Marine Corps completely on a new course. Yeah. Um, as a, you remember, he's the one who coined special operations capable for the muse. He's like, okay, we are going to be a lighter, more agile uh, force. We're going to be closer to special operations. And indeed, look, we're doing this again now. We went through this whole period of, of going, being sucked into, as we had to, you know, the counterinsurgencies, the land wars. But now again, um, we're, we're looking at, at getting uh, kind of moving towards soft in, in how we operate. Yeah. So, and you uh, mentioned books about him. Um, there is one that had been recommended to me. I still haven't read it. It's called Grayisms and Other Thoughts on Leadership from General Al Gray, USMC retired, 29th Commandant of the Marine Corps. It's by uh, Paul Ott, O T T E. Um, and Potomac it's, Institute. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Potomac Institute. Yeah. He's yep. Potomac yeah. Institute. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that looks like a really interesting one. Mm. So if you're, anyone's interested, uh, definitely pick that up. I plan to. Yeah, that's actually, um, it's a great book. I mean, I, I've just flicked through it because I'm too cheap to have bought it. But <laughs> it's a, uh, it's got a lot of his quotes and he has some great quotes. Absolutely. Hey, uh, you know, everyone, everyone has this image of him as being, and, and he was like this rough, ready, marine, tough guy. And he was all of those. Yes, truly. But, um, but what makes him, what gives him such a legacy is his intellect. Yeah. um really uh you know a brilliant guy and um and and also his um i mean the, his intellect what he's done for the marine corps blah 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 but uh but also his compassion you know and that's why he was popular he really you know we talk about tough love tough leadership but he really exemplified that mm -hmm. um there wasn't a false bone in his body and you know uh, one of the things we laughed about when he uh uh, when he and I briefly spoke was, again, he went to uh, Point Pleasant Beach High School and I went to Manasquan High School and we weren't big rivals uh, in, with sports. We did play each other in certain sports, but Point Pleasant Borough, which was the town connected in between his and mine, uh, we they were a big rival. And uh, we used to it was a huge, nasty rival in football, especially. And so one of the things he asked me is, uh, um, so what's the secret? You know, sir, what what, what secrets? Well, he's like, how is it you guys cheat every year and beat, you know, Point Burrow? <laughs> and I just looked at him like, shit, is he being serious? <laughs> he's, but, he's still holding that grudge from 80 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the, the other thing, you know, the, the other legacy that he has among junior Marines is uh, is a memory of um, or a habit of uh, physically assaulting Marines, right? <laughs> you know I mean? What, what would be called physically assaulting now, you know, he would, when, if you were standing, and I, I know this from personal experience, because mm -hmm. I was a PFC and reached the dizzy heights of Lance Corporal uh, as a security guard in uh, Sinclair Fleet mm -hmm. Headquarters, Norfolk, Virginia, 1988 mm -hmm. through blah, 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 1990. Anyway, so junior, you know, PFC Melbourne are standing outside the um, uh, OpCon, the, the you know, control headquarters, and he'd go in and out every time he would punch the Marine in the stomach, right? The the guy standing guard at, at parade for us. <laughs> and so it didn't matter who he was with, you know, CNO, whatever, he, you, you're going to get punched. Can you imagine that happening today? Oh, and then, yeah. and so, yeah, of course, you know, and I, I promise you this is true. There were guys who even put like their log books in, in, you know, under their Charlie shirts. So he would end up punching it. <laughs> I mean, uh, or and and sometimes he'd walk by you and then just elbow you in the kidneys, <laughs> and it was hard, you know. I mean, it really was. It's love, um, yeah. But but now, can you imagine that someone would complain? And Absolutely sure enough, not. it would be yeah. on. It would be on security camera. General assaults, you know, Lance yeah. Corporal. Some Lance Corporal, you know, Snodgrass would be appearing on my ribs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> stand there at a press conference with his family. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Hey, T, we're pushing the time then. Is there anything you want to uh, wrap up uh, with? No, just uh, that Putin in his speech. Uh, 
he also like echoed saying all the terrorists that were apprehended en route to Ukraine trying to cross the border. He said that in yeah. his speech. So. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I don't think we said it, but uh, Ukraine has vehemently denied any kind of uh, anything to do with any of this. Whether or yeah. not it's true, I, I, I can't say, but they immediately said it has nothing to do with us. There's, there would be absolutely nothing, nothing, to nothing to gain. Yeah, a lot to be, a lot right. to be lost. Yeah. Um, although you know, driving up to the building in a van with Ukrainian flags might be, you know, the best, a really good method of doing this. You know, yeah. hide in plain sight. Yeah. Anyway, all right. On that note, uh, everyone, uh, great, uh, great. Great talking at you. Um, we look forward to your comments uh, as usual. In fact, we're going to start reading out some some of our questions and comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, D, why don't you close this out with any uh, uh, any any commercial words from the sure? Sponsor? Little house cleaning, um, housekeeping. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. It's very important. Please, yeah. If you're listening to us on the audio platforms, rate and review at five stars. It's also as important. Um, check out Andy's book. He's a very good yeah. writer. I get ten cents. Every, yeah, everyone that's born. So, uh, check out the Patreon when when, uh, when the tempest gathers. Yeah, the link will be in the description for everything. Jason doesn't have a book. He's gonna write one soon, and we'll put the link in that this in the description. Then, as we'll soon as I get a ghost writer, writer. yeah. So don't forget, because being engaged <laughs> is very important. It helps the channel. It helps the shows. Uh, it's very important. So do us a favor. Comment too. Comment if you don't like us. I don't give a shit. Just comment. Say whatever you want. But don't forget to like and subscribe, be engaged, tell a friend too. So and the Patreon, patreon.com slash the team. Hey, great, great comments uh from a In the lot of French people. Great comments uh on the on the French episode from people in France. Yeah. And uh I mean a, a great some some at times reposted. Um some of it was uh was abusive. Uh thank you for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> someone said uh, you know, how come you don't know that um you know the national front is not called the national i'm sorry i am <laughs> not oh yeah I, that i, I didn't know missed, that he yeah, missed their I'm last not, meeting i'm not as steeped in french politics and there is a reason for that we yeah. try and, and sorry i know you guys you guys don't have a state of the union superpowers you know yeah. and, anyway all right hey see you in a few days guys all the thank best you. thanks everyone